So sometimes just a little stretch or deep breathing helps me refocus my mind. And this is a practice that we do in a lot of our classes in the lower school Carl, called mindfulness. How many of you practice mindfulness with your teachers or in your classrooms? I know quite a few of us do. And that's what our next speaker is going to be talking about today. So you may have seen him around school. He's an upper school language teacher. And he's going to talk all about mindfulness, among other things. Please welcome Mr. Bora Ranchik. Thank you very much, uh, Ms. Wheatley, for that fantastic uh, practice, that mindfulness practice that has really set a nice uh, tone to this uh, talk this morning. Um, welcome to this historic day, because it's the first time that I've ever been asked to do a TED-type talk, and I've only agreed to do it because uh, Ms. Smith has told me that uh, it's going to lead to me becoming very wealthy and very famous, and if that doesn't happen, I'll ask my money back. But seriously, uh, I'm really... I'm uh, grateful that you've asked me to come here um, today um, because I'm going to talk to you about something that is uh, very near and dear to my heart and that is this thing called mindfulness. What is mindfulness? That's a very good question. When I moved to Thailand over 15 years ago to live and work, I first came across this thing called mindfulness and I think that over the last 15 to 20 years, we can genuinely say that this thing called mindfulness has become a global and a cultural phenomenon. Now, that simply means that millions of people all over the world on a daily basis are taking time out of their busy days to do what we just did with Miss Wheatley, which is to practice some mindfulness. But don't take my word for it. Famous people all over the world are great believers in mindfulness. Here's Oprah, and here's a great basketball legend by the name of LeBron James, who's a great practitioner of mindfulness. This is taken actually in the middle of a big final. And in a timeout, instead of uh, talking to his teammates, he was actually doing a mindfulness practice. Here's a slide that gives you a definition of what mindfulness is. And if I had more time today, I'd unpack it with you. But I want to run something by you. Why don't we do another practice of mindfulness to get a good idea of what mindfulness is really all about? Are you up for that? Yes. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. I'm going to ask you to hold your hands in this position. And in a moment, I am going to count three, two, one, and then we're all going to clap one, two, three, and we're, we're going to shout one, two, three, we'll clap our hands as loudly as we can, and then we're going to come back into this position. So just to give this some real attitude and some real meaning so that we know it's uh, something a bit different, can I ask you all to please stand up? So just to recap, I'll give you three, two, one, and then we're going to go one, two, three. Okay, so let's make a lot of noise, but absolutely no talking, please. And then uh, I'll guide you in a very short mindfulness practice. Are you ready to start? Are you ready? Are you steady? Three, two, one. One, two, three. And let's just hold our hands in this position, about this distance apart. Imagine that you're holding a football. Be absolutely still. Can I ask you to bring your attention to the palms of your hands? What do you feel? Ask yourself that question. Maybe some tingling, some zingling. Maybe they actually hurt if you really clapped hard. And now take your attention to your thumbs. How do your thumbs feel today? What's going on down there? And now, take your attention to your little fingers. Maybe wiggle them around. How do they feel today? And now, maybe your hands are getting a bit tired because we're keeping them in this unusual pose. Bring your attention to your arms. And if they're aching, really try and see how that ache feels. And now, can I ask you to take your seat? 
uh, to sit down, please. And absolutely quietly put your hands on your top of your legs and keep your eyes closed. And to finish off, I'm going to ask you to continue doing something that you have been doing every day of your life since you were born, and that is breathing. But this time, I want you to focus deliberately on your in-breath and your out-breath, and really try and see if you can feel where your breath goes in and where your breath goes out, just for 30 seconds. So just bring your focus to your in-breath and your out-breath, and see if you can be 100% absolutely silent. In a few moments, you'll hear the sound of the bell, and that's gonna mark the end of this formal practice of mindfulness. And when you can no longer hear the sound of the bell, could you please put up your hand and open your eyes. Thank you very much. Please open your eyes if you haven't already done so. Now, for many of you, that may be the first time that you've ever done a formal practice of mindfulness. From my position, you guys look fantastic. Can you please give yourself a big round of applause? And now the why. Why is it that millions of people around the world on a daily basis are actually taking their time out from their busy schedules to sit quietly, to practice walking mindfulness, to do other mindfulness practices. And here's the reason. As you've no doubt understood by now, mindfulness is all about paying attention. And what research is telling us is that our mental health and happiness are deeply shaped by where we choose to place our attention. In other words, very simply put, where we put our attention and awareness really matters. However, as we all know, you guys as students and us as teachers, paying attention is, is not easy. Did you know that we have about 50,000 thoughts in a day? Hard to believe, but true. How can we possibly pay attention when our mind is jumping us from one thought to another? But the great thing about this, and this is why I'm really passionate about mindfulness, is just as you can improve your violin play, or you can improve your tennis strokes, or you can improve your basketball shots, or your swimming strokes by practice, so you can learn to be a better attender, to have more concentration by practicing. And if that's true, imagine how useful this could be to us if we were to take a little bit of time every day just to work on our attention, just to practice as though we were practicing basketball shooting or our swimming stroke. Imagine how that's going to help us. I mentioned research. Research is telling us lots and lots of things about mindfulness and so many things that I can't really talk about all of them here, but what I've done is I've squash some of them into this acronym, which I call the CARE acronym. Research is telling us that if we take time out to practice mindfulness on a daily basis, the likelihood is that we're going to become much more compassionate, caring, kind. We're going to develop our ability to be calm and relaxed. And most certainly, we're going to improve our awareness and our attention. Imagine how that's going to help us in school when the teacher keeps on saying, come on, concentrate, concentrate. And something called resilience, this thing that we all talk about, which really means being able to recover from a setback, a defeat, or a disappointment. And last but not least, 
emotional regulation, which simply means our ability to take control of our emotions, not least that difficult one called anger. So I think my time is uh, just about up, but not before sharing with you this last slide. I trust and hope that you've enjoyed our practice and that you found it interesting and educational in the biggest uh, sense of the world. And if you have, I invite you all, elementary students, to use this presentation as a call to action and think about doing some of the things that I've mentioned on the slide. You could go home this evening and you could talk to your parents about this mindfulness thing and actually teach them how to do a 30 second or one minute mindfulness practice. You can talk to your teacher and ask them to log on to Mindful Schools, which is a fantastic organization based in California, which is dedicated to promoting mindfulness uh, in schools throughout the world. You can ask your teacher to show you the Just Breathe video. It's a five minute video, and in this video, elementary students are talking about mindfulness and they're showing us how to practice mindfulness. And it's really good for those of us who've got anger issues. I would, be, I would be delighted to come to your classes and talk to you more about mindfulness and also even to teach the whole Mindful Schools curriculum. Please chat to your teachers and also if you want to talk further, send me an email please or just come and knock on my door. I'm in 404. And so, finally, my time really is out now and this is my last word. I really believe that practicing mindfulness can help us care. It's going to help us care for ourselves, care for others, and most importantly, care for the world. Boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much.